Today I decided that uh, I would pull the play field components off and clean and prep up some of the areas on here that I start doing repairs on that. See what I needed as far as parts, try to get those ordered. <clears throat> uh, the cabinet, I haven't done the outside of this cabinet and I've seen a few people were waiting to see what it looked like with the head that's already painted. <clears throat> but I need to get the cabinet tore apart. So the play field's one of the pieces that's got to go. It's going to come out, get ripped all apart, order my pieces, fix and polish and clean up what I can. The metal pieces, I will probably wet sand them, get them nice and shiny, and probably add clear coat to them. So I don't have to ever tear it back apart again. And I'm just going to tear a few things down, bag it up, keep the screws to the side, and... Once this is out, I, I probably will remove these side pieces too on the outside of the cabinet. And I'm not going to bore you with taking a bunch of screws out for the moment. I'll come back once I get over the part. Alright, I want to do a quick little video short of my teardown because I want to get to the play field here so I can copy some of this artwork and stuff. And if you see, Really, there's a couple little nails, the wood rail edges, flippers are still on here yet. But I want to give you a tip, especially for new people. And I turn this around and show you, it looks like I ripped this thing totally apart. I did not. Top bumpers, I nipped the wires, pinned them up along with the components put the pieces back on, put the screws back in. I took out just the necessary things to clear the pay, play field on this thing. If you tear all this off and you've never done this before, this will become a nightmare for you. And this, I'm just giving the word of advice. I've been there, done it myself, anxious and everything, and just like tore everything apart. It ends up in a tote and you have no clue how to put it back together, or you may not have the wiring schematics for this thing. But if you take your time, these little things right here, your, your contacts, I put, take a screw out, take the other one out to where it loosens up, slide a zip tie through there, because all these little carbon pieces on the back will fall off. They're height adjustments. Pin that together with a zip tie. Again, I have them all down through here. I pinned everything in. Uh, if I clip the wire off, I pinned it over here where the parts are where I put this back together so I know, hey, this is the wire that goes down to that contact or to that light for the pop-up bumper. So don't get too overexcited and just tear everything apart and throw it in the pile because you'll get disappointed, aggravated, and that's probably where it will set for years and years. If you take your time, it, I, I'm, I'm approximately two hours. Taking my time, loosen the part, pin everything up, put the pieces over on the table, then I'm going to clean. Take some pictures of this stuff, front and back. That way you have a documentation of how you put this thing together once you have it all ripped apart. But I just want to give that little tip real quick. <clears throat> take your time, take pictures, lots of pictures. The more pictures, the better. And uh, it can be an enjoyable experience. And we'll show you a little more here a little later on once I get a few more things off of here and clean the face of this so I can see what for damages I actually have and what we're going to repair. Thank you. Hello everyone, we're back. Um, I removed all the pieces from the play field. I do have the components down below. They're just wire tied back and whatnot. I pulled all the parts off. They're all laying in here, all the plastics and so forth. These here, um, I'm going to take and put in some soapy water, some of the pieces, and the others I'm going to add a little mean green to them. These particular pop bumper caps, this um, stenciling on the top and the color can actually come off. So you don't want to these, leave these soaked very long. These you want to take a little extra care, mist your cleaner on, let it settle a little bit and work it with a soft sponge like I have here. Use the yellow part, not the big, hard, rough part on the back, or you'll tear the lettering right off of these. All this stuff will clean up nicely. 
and wanted to show you some things on the play field here that we're going to get into. I know I still have the cabinet to do, and everybody's waiting to see what the cabinet looks like, but I'm trying to move everybody along, <clears throat> and I'll catch up on the cabinet when I get the chance to here with you. Um, we have some damages in the play field in around here. Down here, I have a chunk of wood missing. Show you how to fix and repair this here. And we'll try to keep the repair area down as minimal as possible because we still need to see what's around it so that we can recreate everything. We have our light up inserts. I will show you how to remove these, and these can be a little bit tricky. And especially if you have a cabinet that's been damp for a while or the wood has swollen a little bit, but we'll take our times and we'll get take our time and we'll get you through these, get these out. <clears throat> and let's see where was I? I went and picked up the colors for this today, and I am going to show you how to work the play field. We'll remove these, do a little bit of light prep on the surface area. There are a few places around here we'll have to sand and reflush these up. We want to try to be very care careful of the, all these black lines. The black lines are actually more important than this big area. <clears throat> We will make uh, our decals with the vinyl. We'll back mask with uh, fine line tape. And oddly enough, I, Melissa donated this. This is fingernail tape. And they use it for decorating their fingernails. And it just so happens to be, it is identical thickness to these lines, which is absolutely great. <clears throat> We'll be back masking these areas, doing all these black line areas in around our repairs, all this. We'll do a small section at a time. If you try to do the whole thing, you will get mad. It'll be too much of one thing at one time. So we'll work a small area, do the repairs here. We have the colors and the paint, so they will match all the way down through. So we have plenty of that. I'll show you how to do these small areas here with the woodwork. That's showing like here, where nothing, it actually had no paint, just clear. We'll make all our short line decals, and we'll just work it an area at a time. And <clears throat> generally, you're best to not jump here and here and here and here and here, but if do, uh, say, the white here, and come a little piece away so that you aren't messing up this work, and work on a little area here, and we'll do that, and then we'll come back in and fill this area in. And this isn't going to happen overnight. Um, I mean, with the magic of fast forward on your videos and so forth, you could put this into a five minute speed video. But you're looking at this to do a repair on this is 40, 50 hours. I could do it a different way, make it nice, get out my airbrushes and stuff, but I'm going to try to keep it as simple as possible. I, I even went out of the way and I matched up um, color shaded aerosols and stuff. Uh, some were standard stock colors, bought at Lowe's, others were not. But uh, we're going to show you how to do this. Consider the outside of your cabinet and what I showed you on the head of this cabinet is just a break, getting your feet wet and getting you into the, the skill set of hey, I can do this a different way. It may take a little bit of time, but it's well worth the effort. The look is superior to the factory. Sometimes people don't like that, but I kind of like, hey, it's nice, crisp, sharp, but it is the exact artwork. <clears throat> but uh, teaching us all how to do your play fields and stuff. And on here, on like on the cabinet, where it was all squares and straight lines, we have rounds, radius, triangles, stars, rectangles, quarter moon waves, all kinds of um, details. And we'll work it in a small area. And if you have something, if you want to, uh, just for practice, if, if you've never done this before, take a... Take a um, my word, just take a, a page out of a magazine or something and throw it down underneath a piece of plastic. You don't need to glue it down super fast, but just try your skill set and see how comfortable you are with trying to 
cut on a particular piece of the magazine to make that shape. <clears throat> but we'll work through it. As a matter of fact, maybe that'll be a good good thing for me to show you. I'll show you you can do that with a piece of cardstock cereal box. Maybe like uh, Fruit Loops or something. What is it, a toucan? <laughs> Toucans on uh, the Fruit Loops. You know, you can practice, practice on the cereal box. You don't need to jump right in and start ripping and tearing at your play field if you're uncomfortable. We'll see if we can find a cereal box, and I'll show you how to do it on a little, maybe a little piece of a cereal box, a small area. And <clears throat> that'll give everybody a chance. I know there's other people out there that would probably be like, well, just jump right into it, Charlie. Get this thing done, you know. But there are people out there that the purpose of this video and this particular machine is to show everybody that you don't have to spend, spend tons of money um, to repair these things. And kind of like a project of love. Uh, if you take your time, these things will come out looking great. Um, if you mess up, there's nothing here that you can't come back and actually repair. If you, if you have a little issue someplace, you know, you're off a little bit. Once everything around where you're working is dry, come back to it. Use your vinyl if you have to. Make it up. And If you're a little crooked, you can correct that on top of your vinyl. Make a new stencil. Set it down where you need it. Mark on the back side. Help draw on it with a marker. If you're out here on this black edge, we'll be able to come back, repair that, back mass that edge, use your stencil piece, put the black in. Oh, and again, we're, we're Melissa's fingernail stuff. Once you're done, run that line back around. This will cover up your black edge. <clears throat> we'll tape this off and come back through with our main color again. But I'm kind of rambling on and getting everybody a little bit ahead of the game. Probably getting a few people excited, like, oh, man, I can't wait to get started. But uh, for now, <clears throat> I'm going to go do another unfun task, which is clean all these pieces up. I am going to get on eBay here a little later, order new uh, bumper rubbers. I'll probably just buy the kit, the complete kit. It'll give me for the shooter, the rod, the new tip. And, oh, am I missing anything? I'm actually going to refer to Melissa's little cheat sheet this time. When I was talking to her, was bumper covers. Uh, actually, I think I pretty much got everything covered here. Um, you can use Mean Green, clean your surface area. Um, That kind of takes us into this project. So we'll kind of stay with this. Um, pieces like this here, generally steel wool will clean these up nice. Your metal pieces, it'll where the rust in the green is. Again, steel wool. I wouldn't recommend getting on it with your Brillo pad in the house. It, if it's coarse enough, it'll leave scratches. We actually just want to polish it and get it to a nice sheen. Um, our bumper covers. And these have a light in the bottom of them. Down here, a light socket. You can get these wet. It won't hurt them to be in there soaking a little bit because there's little contact points down in here where these little lamps turn into, like the old style flashlight bulbs. We'll have to get in there and clean and polish the bottom and the edge of these. On the back side of this here, I said earlier about I nipped the wires. I cut them right at the very, very tip where the connection is. Don't chop any more out and try not to cut your <clears throat> contacts that run up in. But all this stuff can be submersible. This piece here, again, a piece of uh, fine steel wool will polish this up. And I think I'm rambling again, aren't I? Well, folks, uh, I'm going to go, like I said, get my hands dirty, clean up all these pieces. And hopefully I've been a little bit entertaining, if nothing else. And next time we see you, I'll have these all cleaned up. Hopefully some parts ordered. Uh, we were up at Lowe's. I know there's a few, few odd and end screws were missing from the back side. I noticed when I started tearing this thing apart. But... Uh, 
I guess that's it for now. And hope everybody enjoyed the video.